Hello, and welcome back to Tales Along El Camino Sierra, where we take you on a sentimental journey along Highway 395. We really appreciate you tuning in, and we hope you will consider sharing our channel with everyone you think may enjoy it. With that, we hope you enjoy this tale. This tale of Eastern Sierra history is the history of the Mount Whitney Fish Hatchery. At the beginning of the 20th century, sports fishing in California was growing at a very rapid rate. By 1900, the state had already opened 32 facilities whose purpose was to enhance and help propagate California's growing sport fishing industry. In 1913, with the budget for the State Commission of Fisheries skyrocketing, the first general fishing license in California was put into effect. All anglers over 18 were required to pay a $1 per year to the state for the privilege to sport fish. The influx of revenues created by the sale of tens of thousands of fishing licenses enabled many new programs and facilities for the State Commission of Fisheries. Several new fisheries were planned, including one to provide trout for anglers from the southern part of the Golden State. The Fish and Game Commissioner from the southern region, M.J. Connell, preferred the new hatchery to be built in the Sierra Nevada. Despite intense lobbying from boosters in Lake Arrowhead, Mount Baldy, and Big Bear for their own respective communities, Tuttle Creek near Lone Pine and Oak Creek near Independence became the two favored locations. In early December of 1915, Connell came to the Owens Valley and spent several days talking to the citizens of both Lone Pine and Independence. Commissioner Connell requested that local government provide the land that the hatchery was to be built on and build a good road to the new hatchery site as well. The state would pick up the rest of the tab. Connell left the area on December 8th, and Independence town leaders quickly went to work calling for a meeting at the Inyo County Courthouse. It's reported that over half the town attended the meeting, with longtime Inyo County Judge William Dahey presiding. The good citizens of Independence stepped up and donated or pledged over $1,800 that day to purchase the property on Oak Creek, and County Supervisor George Naylor was able to get a commitment from the fellow board members to build a road to the proposed fish hatchery site. It was, as they say, a very liberal subscription, and Independence was on its way as the preferred choice for the new hatchery. On December 15th, Commissioner M.J. Connell announced a 40-acre tract just north of Independence has been chosen as the site for the new show hatchery. Connell had been deeply moved by the grandeur of the magnificent Sierra Nevada mountains while inspecting the proposed site at Oak Creek. He felt the majestic scenery was the perfect complement for a show hatchery and instructed his engineering team to design a building that would match the mountains, would last forever, and would be a showplace for all time. The announcement brought forth a tidal wave of protests from communities which believed their own area should have been chosen for the new hatchery. Newspapers from Los Angeles, Pomona, and San Bernardino expressed outrage at the decision. Lone Pine civic leaders asked their state senator to intervene on their behalf, but McConnell held fast and work soon began at the Oak Creek site. Once the decision to build at Oak Creek appeared secure, Commissioner Connell moved the project forward at breakneck speed. Connell met with the state engineering office in late January and told them the project should be considered as emergency work, and he expected the office to put six men on designing plans and specifications for the new hatchery, and to have the design completed in a matter of days. The engineer's finished design called for an enormous 42-foot by 200-foot building with a tower rising over 90 feet high. The new hatchery was to be built of native stone with a tile roof and cement floors. The estimated construction cost was between thirty dollars to $45,000. Taking care of the numerous details took longer than Connell had anticipated. Nevertheless, by the end of March, Less than eight weeks after Engineer had begun the work of designing the great building, construction commenced on the banks of Oak Creek. The Inyo Independent newspaper declared, It will be the finest hatchery in the West, if not the world. It wasn't just a world-class building that Connell wanted. He hired John McLaren, the famed landscape architect from Golden Gate Park in San Francisco, 
to design world-class gardens and grounds around the hatchery. McLaren even sent his chief gardener from Golden Gate Park to the hatchery site to lay out the grounds according to his plan and supervise the work. Rocks for the hatchery walls were gathered within a quarter mile of the site for its construction. The rocks were sorted and placed according to their size. Many of the rocks on the hatchery's outer wall are two to three feet thick, and the builders masterfully placed each and every stone, as none of the boulders were cut or broken. It's estimated the building is constructed of over 3,200 tons of granite. Work progressed on the hatchery in rapid fashion. By December 1916, the hatchery was nearly complete, a mere nine months after work had first commenced. Imagine that kind of construction schedule happening today. The state-of-the-art hatchery was turned over to the Fish and Game Commission on January 15, 1917, with the total price tag now somewhere between sixty to $75,000. In addition to the main room with the fish rearing troughs, the great hatchery's first floor consisted of a large reception hall, outer and private offices, restrooms, and other support rooms. The second floor contained quarters for the superintendent and his family, and the 90-foot tower contained a beautiful guest chamber, and above that, an observatory. The opposite end of the building contained additional housing for line staff. The magnificent new hatchery opened in January 1917, and the state got right to work producing trout for the California sport angler. The hatchery was state-of-the-art when it opened and was the largest fish hatchery in the entire United States at the time. During its time, the Mount Whitney Fish Hatchery has provided hundreds of millions of rainbow, golden, and brook trout, as well as several other species of sport fish. The hatchery has withstood many challenges over the decades. Budget cuts, whirling disease, and changing policies all threaten to close the great Inyo County institution at one time or another. Then, in July of 2019, lightning sparked a forest and rangeland fire above the South Fork of Oak Creek. Fanned by high winds, the blaze roared straight down at the hatchery, destroying several homes, including the historic Bright Ranch. The hatchery itself escaped significant damage. Nine firefighters were overtaken by the raging fire and survived by jumping into the ponds at the hatchery. A firestorm roared around the brave men for 20 minutes. It was chilling to hear the communications on the radio as the firefighters were surrounded by flames. Skilled pilots maneuvered their aircraft perfectly, making water drops to beat the inferno back. Fortunately, all nine firefighters at the hatchery itself survived, and the hatchery building also survived the raging torrent of fire. One year later, a massive mud flow created by torrential summer rains falling in the burned area engulfed the hatchery and grounds. Damage was of epic proportions, and the Mount Whitney Fish Hatchery was no longer to operate as a working hatchery. But the great hatchery may have been down, but it was still not out. The nonprofit Friends of the Mount Whitney Fish Hatchery, the Agua Bonita Fishing Club from Ridgecrest, and literally thousands of volunteers and supporters have given of their time, effort, and treasure to keep the Mount Whitney Fish Hatchery open as a world-class demonstration fish hatchery. Today, visitors can still enjoy the beautiful building and learn about its rich history at the visitor center operated and maintained by the Friends. If you'd like to learn more or perhaps support this Eastern Sierra landmark, you can join the Friends of the Mount Whitney Fish Hatchery by going to their website. Please consider stopping in at the Mount Whitney Fish Hatchery the next time you're in the area. It's just three miles north of Independence and just a short drive off of El Camino Sierra. We hope you'll stop in at the Mount Whitney Fish Hatchery the next time you're in the area. This Eastern Sierra landmark is one of the most beautiful structures you'll ever see. And the Friends Group there does a great job in keeping it operating as a demonstration hatchery an interpretive center. You'll find it open from about mid-April through November. Thank you again for tuning in, and we hope you'll always enjoy the tales you create from your own travels along El Camino Sierra.